Okay, we're live. Right. Hello, friends. Um, okay, so today we want to make waffles. I just realized I didn't get the waffle iron out. That's all right. We have time. Don't we need to preheat it? Yeah, but we re we're going to make this first, remember? So if we start it now, we'll be fine. I'm going to get the waffle iron out. Uh, and these are not just any waffles. They are yeasted waffles. So we're going to show you how to make the dough, batter dough, I don't know, batter dough. Batter so dough. It's a weird mix. Uh, and then we will make them. We're going to do that and I think a smoothie so that we get some vegetables. Yeah. So, you know, help. Okay. It's not locked. I know you get mad when I forget to do that. It says in the instructions that it's not supposed to be locked. And every time you and I both know every you didn't time read those instructions. I did. That's how I did. <laughs> every time you lock it, you burn your burn your fingers. It happens every single time. Um. Okay. So, what do we do? Uh, so we we have to do this one. There's um. There's like a resting phase for this dough. Yeah. So what we did is we we actually made this batter last night yeah. and then we're going to make another batch of it yeah. right now yeah. and then we'll actually make waffles with, with yesterday's batter. But the cool thing is that you can freeze these so and they're just as good. They're legitimately really good reheated. Yeah, uh, as they are when you make them fresh. Well, fresh meaning fresh the, next, the next day. Freshish. Um, freshish. 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 All right. So. All right. What happens next? We need a bowl. Okay, what's the uh, big one? Last Two, one. we need the little silver one and the big one. The big silver bowl as well as no, the last no, no. one? the little silver bowl. Okay. So it's pretty uh, low on the equipment, which is nice. Doesn't require a lot. Um, and the first thing we want to do is melt together our butter and our milk. Okay, so if I want to do that, I'll get a saucepan. saucepan out. All right, and then we'll so let's start this. here. I was trying to lay everything out. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's super helpful, see, but right now we can see. So, how much milk do we need? One and, a th one and three quarter cup. Okay. So we have a measuring cup here. Mm -hmm. Get our one and three quarters. We have one trash can, and it is currently the stand for his laptop. I think we're I think we're about ready to invest in this thing. I think I'm gonna get some equipment to that we are a little higher quality on future food streams. Cause right now we're just using the phone. We don't have mics. It's uh. Jason gets to fight with the what is it called the gorilla? It's the gorilla pod, like uh, those, yeah. those uh kind of tripody like bendy tripods. Yeah. You don't need to make them that small either. Oh, they can be this yeah, big. Yeah, that's fine. You just need to break it up so that they can. Got it. So then we're going to put this on the stove at low heat. Um, and you're just trying to melt it together. So you don't want it to boil. You don't want it to bubble. You're just trying to get the butter melted into the milk. Um, and so you can leave that while you do the rest of the stuff. So what's up, Chad? How you doing? What's your What's your morning like today? What are you, what are you eating? What are you up to? You all call your moms? It's Mother's Day. Yeah, you remember that last night. 
We definitely haven't called our moms yet. Not yet. Okay. All right, so now we will put together the dry stuff. So we always want to keep our dry and wet ingredients separate. Okay. Uh, I got to get the, my phone, my, it's on my phone. This is a Cook's Illustrated recipe, by the way. It's, um. Cook's Illustrated is a pay site, but it yeah. is so worth it. It's a paint site. They have yeast. To, they have this yeast and waffles recipe. They've got really good, um, really good recipes on. Also, just like explaining the science of it. And if you want to try it before you get it, actually, you can get it through the library, I think, as well. So I tried some recipes through there first, just to make sure it was worth the investment. Um, that is a tip from my friend Leslie, who told me to do that. Mm -hmm. Very good tip. So. We want the scale, actually, um, and all you'll need is teaspoons. You won't need the cups. Um, so 10 ounces of flour. And I'll get the teaspoon, tablespoon cup. Okay, so we're just going by weight, which is a great way to do... Oh, oh is this too much? Yeah, you'll need to put it on there and then put it back on, and it'll... Go crazy. No, no. Ounces, right? Yeah. Right. There you go. Okay. Ten ounces. Okay. Ten ounces flour. Yep. All right. And so this is just a, uh, it's an all purpose flour. Yeah, just normal flour. Ten ounces is not as much as you might think, so be careful. Let's see, there's. I bake a lot of bread, so. When I see 10 ounces, I'm like, that's not very much, but it's enough. Well, and also we're we're not trying to make waffles for a bunch of people. We're trying to make waffles for the two of us. I mean, this, so is, this still is already going to have This is still the normal recipe. It will still have a bunch of leftovers, I think, so. Come on. This is painful. Listen. Yeah. So 10 ounces of that, and then you're going to put in do you need more of this? Yep. Nope. A tablespoon of sugar. And then teaspoons of everything else. Really simple. Oh, shit. Sure. Okay. Oh, right. okay, so a tablespoon of sugar. So I've got my tablespoon here. Oh my god. It's not that big of a mess. It's like a medium sized 
Okay, what do I do next? I whisk it? Whisk. Alright, so the butter and milk is still, the butter's still like cold enough to hold shape, so we're not worried about that yet. Meanwhile, whisk flour, sugar, salt, and yeast. Okay. So I am whisking to combine. So making chicken stock is like, it's a life hack. Um, if you if you make chickens or if you get chickens, uh, when you're done, you're gonna have this like, you know, the carcass, like the bones, you know, the rib cage and the, and the back and stuff. And um, if you, you know, if you make other other chicken stock, you trim off the wing tips or, or whatever, you, uh, you trim off chicken fat, so on and so forth. You can just kind of throw all that into a freezer bag. And then um, when you, have enough, like a gallon bag full, you can put all that into a stock pot with, uh, what, like thyme, carrots, uh, onion, celery? Yeah, you, it's, I kind of do whatever I've got on hand. It's a good way to get rid of, or not get rid of, but like use extra vegetables, especially vegetables that are starting to, to turn. Yeah. Um, and so you throw in carrots, celery, onions, um, whatever herbs you got, um, Thyme, rosemary, sage, you know, if you've got stuff left over. Probably anything except like parsley or cilantro. You don't want anything super, super, super strong. But things that complement the chicken, like a roast chicken, work really well. Garlic, um, and then a bay leaf or two. And then you just put that on the stove and let that simmer, come to a simmer. Yeah. And then you put it in the oven and on like 180 for like eight hours. Just let it go throughout the day, works really well. Yeah, it, and honestly, you can leave it like overnight. It's amazing. Yeah, if you want. You could probably do it in a salt cooker too, I guess. Probably. I mean, a Dutch oven is basically a slow cooker. Um, okay, so I also needed two large eggs yeah. and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I'm gonna set this aside. You wanna check on that butter and milk? Cause is it? Yeah. That's bad. Okay, so I'm putting my eggs. Put that away. And my so two eggs. Teaspoon of vanilla extract. All right. What's up, uh, Limpid? Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. All right. Um, so now I've got my. Whisk eggs and vanilla until combined, and then I'm going to add that to the batter. So this is just going to kind of sit aside. And so I'm going to get these. Basically, I'm just going to go until they all look like one uniform mixture, right? You're you're wanting to whisk this until it looks all the same color. You still you don't want any separation. Um. Yeah. I mean. So we're gonna let that sit. And then you're and waiting. Just, you're waiting on that thingy. The should I agitate this at all? Um. Yeah. You can kind of shake the pan if you want. All right. 
I'm just gonna use this whisk, I think. Just kinda bump it around. stirring this butter and milk. The goal is we want it to melt, but it, we're mixing it with eggs, right? So we want it to be the minimum amount of warm to melt this butter. Yeah. And then we have to cool it down a little bit. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a stir that helps get the, the melted butter away from the solid butter, which will get it in contact with the warm milk faster. Help it melt down a little bit quicker, which it's already doing, which is good. I'm still fixing the, I had to find jars. That worked for the yeast. Well, you're still fixing the yeast. Yeah, because I I couldn't <laughs> find a jar that it would all fit in, and then I needed two jars. That's our reminder from the waffle. Yeah. That it's are on. you gonna make waffles or what? Like, hey, what are you doing? Me on? Are we doing this? Do I serve a purpose? Or? Okay. seems combined, so I'm going to turn this off. Yeah, and you got to make sure it's not hot. So it needs to just be warm. It's too too hot for me to put a finger in here, so I'm going to... Yeah, so that's a really good test, actually. Yeah, if, you, if when you've got a liquid, if it's, what, too hot for your finger, it'll cook the eggs? Yeah, so whenever you're putting a hot liquid into um, a mixture that has eggs, if you can't put your... Whoa. Please don't do that. If you can't... Put your finger in it without it burning. It's too hot and it will cook your eggs. Okay, there's probably like we should say there's a reasonable limit to this. Like, don't just stick your finger into any liquid <laughs> on the stove. <laughs> like, you should be yeah, pretty maybe, sure that it's cooled down yeah. before you do that. <laughs> you, might, you might want to put it in here and then stir it. I think it's okay. It's, well, yeah, but the, it's already that pan down. is still hot. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to make more dishes? I mean, I'll make more dishes. I don't mind. How hot is the pan? It's hot. Keep stirring. Sometimes you can, last night I had to stir it in the fridge. We were in a hurry. I, yeah, and I left it too long. So that was my own fault. But yeah, you need to be able to easily put your finger in and not burn it off. And the reason that I'm stirring it here is that that puts some air in, the air is cooler than the liquid, which uh, you know, something, cool something, down. physics, laws of something, thermodynamics. Something, physics. Yeah, you know. Yeah, very good. Math, science. Math, science, all that yeah, good stuff. Yeah, all those things together combined. Um, so we tried, we made these yeasted waffles, and then we've also made buttermilk waffles. We tried those a couple weeks ago. I think these are better, personally. These take patience, though. Like you have yeah. to make them the night before, because after we after we finish this batter, it has to sit for how long? Up to twenty four hours, hours yeah. in the fridge. But it's actually really nice because on a day like today, say when it's I don't know Mother's Day or something else, when you you are trying to do something nice to someone but you don't want to be cooking the whole time, do these in advance. Put them in the oven or yeah. Put them in the fridge. Because we, so like we said, we made a batch yesterday. Um, and so when when we get this dough or this batter ready, we're going to throw that into the fridge to age yeah. and then we're going to pull out the other one. Yeah. And so we'll be able to show. Cooking magic. Yeah, cooking, the magic of cooking television. Yeah. Um, but it'll be, it'll be cool because basically like now that this waffle iron is hot, this is going to go really fast. It's still a little too warm. Oh yeah, about down there. Yeah. Should, should we pour this into something else? Um, I mean, you're still like, gonna have to. The, well, this is just holding heat. Yeah, it? that's what I was saying before. Yeah, I think. I mean, I just I didn't want to make dishes, but maybe, maybe for the sake of going a little bit faster. We could. And then I'll 
always good. Um, problem is all of our bowls are kind of heat retentive, so they're all glass or um, metal, which is good when you're usually, but in this case we're trying to cool it down, so that is a little frustrating. Yesterday I had to do this with it sitting in the fridge. It was very wasteful, time consuming. But this should be better, hopefully. There's no. There you go. 
Pour that in. Eggs and vanilla. Make sure you get the extra egg out of the bowl. There's a little, there's always a little. A little bonus egg? Yeah, a little bonus egg. Stir that so that it's all mixed together. And now you'll use the spatula when you're done to clean up the sides. So this is just to make sure that your sides are clean. You don't get like kind of crusty bits. What's going to happen is that there's yeast in here. The yeast is going to start eating the sugar and the, the sugar that you put in and the sugars in the flour. Yep. Um, and then it's going to slowly rise overnight. So um, why does it rise? Science. Um, I, I know. I know this one. Well, let me see if okay. I know. Okay. I don't know. I was, trying to, I was trying to softball you when I thought you knew I this. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> so as the, as the yeast eats the um, sugars, it releases carbon dioxide, and that creates air. Uh, so there, it just becomes filled with little air pockets and slowly rises up. Um, and that's what makes bread fluffy. Yeah, and it's delicious. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. So now I'm just going to grate the sides of the bowl here. Super simple. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's nice to clean up your work, you know. All right. And then so that's the dough, right? That's, that's the batter. dough. That's the batter. So, so at this point, we just cover it. Yep. Do you so, want to show off our hair nets? Yeah. So my um, great aunt, who saved everything and who liked to only use one thing at a time, she wanted to be very, it takes me forever to find these. She wanted to be very economical because that's who she was. And so she bought these uh, plastic covers in all different sizes. They look like hair nets. Part of me believes they actually are hair nets. Uh, but we've had these for many, many years. And that's, this is what we use instead of plastic wrap. They have like elastic on them, so they stretch. Some are better than others. This is one where I definitely need Jason's help because it's possibly too small, but we're gonna make it work. So I'm just gonna stand here while I wait for him. Because I'm almost done, I'm almost done. Up. But anyway, it covers the bowl. This is not big enough anyway. It Do covers we... the bowl and makes it so that you don't have to use. This one's big enough, right? Is it? Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, I was so close to getting it on the first try. Okay, so basically here. this is a it's a hair nut for your bowls. Yeah. So it sits under the lip of the bowl here, yeah. and it's created a seal just like plastic wrap. Yeah. Yeah, um, and you can reuse it, so we just rinse and reuse them. Yeah. So you're and not so, throwing away a bunch of plastic wrap. But it does mean that you end up with a kitchen drawer full of like hair reusable nuts. bags and hair nets and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so now. So now, so fun fact, uh, our kitchen is completely clean. Like what? This is one of the things that I like the most about uh, about like maybe just getting experience at cooking is like the the ability to kind of multitask or like oh, let me take that one. Okay, so the, um, let me finish my thought and then I'll talk about this. So uh, as you as you cook, like whenever you have a down second, you gotta wait for something to cool. You gotta let something sit for a second. You can turn around and wash like one or two dishes. And what that ends up meaning is that you get uh, every all the kitchen work is done, and then you just you know we're gonna make this and it's gonna be amazing. So um, okay. these okay. So now we want to talk a little bit about what this should look like. So you see the bubbles on the side there? That is from the yeast eating those flowers, the flour and sugar. And you can see it's um, not smooth anymore. I think you can see this. It's not really smooth anymore. Yeah. There's a lot of bubbles in here. I'm not gonna move it too much because I don't want to knock the air out. And of it. if you smell it. There is a slightly yeasty smell, and you should also kind of be hearing the oh, bubbles popping so a little bit. So it's um, it should, and it will also have risen. So it started out probably down here, and rose this much. So it rose about that that much overnight, and there is like active bubbles in here, which is super cool. All right, so what do you usually use for this? I don't remember what we. I'm just getting ice cream scoop. Now wait again. before you get started because I don't. I haven't looked at this one yet. So we're going to whisk the batter to recombine it, and the, the batter will deflate. So I know, we're about to get there. Hold on. Patience. Um, it'll deflate, and that's okay. fine. So there's like these nice gluten structures in there. It kind of looks like... Um, it now looks like a dough, not like a batter. Yeah. That's good. Okay. It's, 
is it is now whisked, and you can see it's got like a good amount of, of it's got the structure to it. The structure yeah. and like gluteny kind of goodness, which is what we want. There's right? little bubbles in there that are like, no, <laughs> I want to live. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, we have this is a the all clad. I think it's a Belgian style waffle maker. But so the way that this is built is it's got four little waffle sections in it. So I'm going to put like a scoop of dough in each, or a scoop of batter. I keep calling it dough because it looks so much It like is, dough. it's in between dough and batter. It's so very interesting. So basically I'm using an ice cream scoop and, and I'm just throwing it in. And I feel and like I've gotten pushed off of waffle duty because I'm really bad at this. You're not bad at it. I, I am bad at it. It's a, uh, I either overfill it or underfill it. I can never, and I'm slow at it. Also, yeah, it's it's very much Jason like makes the waffles, so. go fast, and I made and pattern, get so. the get the waffles in here. Yeah, and then this is a it's a nonstick waffle iron, so we're basically going for um, full but not like the first one is always kind of an experiment, right? Because every dough is going to rise at a slightly different rate. It's going to be a little bit different, um, and what we're looking for is operate okay what we're looking for is we want it to fill the waffle iron but we don't want it there's a, a cut back here to catch the extra stuff um, and we don't want a bunch of batter to get wasted out the back right so as this rises it's going to expand it's going to fill the waffle iron and uh, and we don't want to waste a bunch of batter so now we kind of want to give this I don't know like three or four minutes before we peek at it and then we're going for how do you know when to look at it that's what I always have trouble with the clock. I, oh, I know, you don't even. I've got it set at like no medium-ish, and I just know that like three, four minutes. Oh. It's also if you if you read the like. I read the instructions. I believe you. I um, did. <laughs> but the, the I read page the one. Instructions... Don't keep it locked when it's on. Done. Instructions complete. Plug in. <laughs> um, oh, we should get a plate so that we can actually do this. Do you want to grab out the? Um, the syrup too, so that we can eat these in front of people. I thought that we were gonna do smoothies. Are we not doing all of them first? Well, I was gonna eat one just to. Oh. Why am I in here? There, syrup. I eat that. It's got a lot of not totally finished syrups in here. Okay, so here is our butter dish. Let's wash that. Real quick. I don't know how we ended up with extra syrups. There's there's varieties. Concerning. There's varieties. Yeah, are there? Yeah, there's uh, one of those is like a darker kind of amber. One of those is light. Um, one of them is a wood fire. Yeah, right. They're all different. This is a light one. I like the light one. I think it's still good. I've got opinions, you know. I also make molasses. Is that Tony? What's up, Tony? Cookies. I smell everything, and Jason called me a trash panda. That is not why I call you a trash panda. I call you a trash panda. I'm because getting there. Oh yeah, go ahead and tell no, the story. No, no, you do it. <laughs> You're gonna be rude. Uh, so, Marissa, like, we cook a lot. And that means we have a lot of leftovers, and so um, it is fairly common that we end up with a bunch of somewhat unidentifiable, uh, like containers in our fridge. And so um, sometimes we lose one, you get stuck in the back, and we'll find it later. Let's see, that has been three minutes, so we'll let it keep going for one more minute and I'll check it. Um, so we'll find a container that is just got something in it and we're like, how old is that? So what a normal person would do is they would smell it and go, doesn't quite smell right, and they would throw it in the trash. But what Marissa will do is say, well, let me taste it first. And then she'll taste it and she'll go, yeah, that's bad. And then she'll take another bite. Like, she's a straight up raccoon. I don't know. It's a problem. I can't not do it either, which is I have okay, to tap two bites. All right, just so. To check. Can everybody see the waffle iron? Did, like, did we frame this properly where know. people can see? Let's take a look. That's not done. These are not quite done. We can tell Let me because see if they... I can. Yeah, can you see? Can you just see? open it again. Can you see? I can see the iron. You can see in? Yeah. And you can see how they're all stuck to the top. Yeah. Leave it. It'll be fine. No, no, it's fine. They're just... Uh, um, look, now they're on the bottom. Okay, we want them well, to be. So those are getting really close, though. They oh, they are, smell uh, good. 
So they smell really yeasty as they cook too. Mm -hmm. If you like yeast, uh, like I do, they are very good. Oh, no worries, Tony. That sounds like a much more important conversation than, yeah. than us making waffles. Um, do you do anything anything nice for your wife? Oh, no pressure. No pressure, yeah, calling you out. I haven't even called my mom yet. We're getting, we're getting there. We gotta make breakfast, you know? Uh -huh. we need, uh, need fuel for the, the Zoom call. Yeah. I don't, I don't like the Zoom calls. I'm kind of getting... Zoom fatigue? Zoom fatigue, yeah. As, um, our friend Henri, uh, Henri Alvedica on Twitter, he, he had this prediction when everybody started staying home, that he, he said that everybody's gonna start getting Zoom fatigue meaning that because our entire lives are gonna happen on Zoom now, that we are going to start feeling burnt, oh yeah, those are definitely done, They're nice and crisp on top, um, but we're gonna start feeling like burned out on the idea of Zoom, mm -hmm. and I'm, I, I can feel it. It's, yep, it's, it's definitely happening. happening. It's happening. Okay, so these are, I'm happy with these, they're looking good. You didn't even get spillover, which is great. Yeah, I, I went a little light. I, I kind of expected that these were gonna be not quite ready. Um, okay, so while we do that, I'm going to get the next batch going. So we're about and the, the one, batter, and a, one and a bit of the ice cream scoop is what I'm finding is the right amount here. The batter will become a little bit more watery or liquidy as, as it, it breaks up. down and heats up from being out of the fridge. So it'll still taste the same. Just, you'll notice it, the structure change, but it's not anything to worry about. So then um, what we will do is make the rest of this batter, and then we're going to freeze these waffles. Any waffles we don't eat will freeze, and there will be waffles we don't eat. Yeah, yeah, there's eat. no way we're going to, we're going to end up with like 12 waffles here, so I, uh, I think we'll get through and so, four or five of them. Uh, you can just seal them up in a freezer bag. How did you do that? You seal them up in the freezer bag and then we reheat them in the We want to uh, freeze them uncovered so they don't steam. Freeze them, what? Like you let them freeze Here. uncovered so they don't steam. And then once they are, um, once they're frozen, then you move them to a bag. Because if you put them in a bag before they're cool, they will, uh, they'll steam the bag and they'll go soft. No, I know, but did you? Did you let them sit on the counter to cool down? Did you put them in the freezer? I'm trying to remember, and I honestly don't. I can't remember if we did. Oh no. I mean, it's you know, I, I think that's going to be a matter of like trying both ways and see if it makes any noticeable difference. Because uh, I I'm kind of of a mind that it's. I feel like you can just leave them out and let them cool down, and then put them in the bag. I think that's what we did. Because we. Really? Well, I just want to try the one, right? Like let's okay. let's just share this. You want to oh. use the. I want that one. Okay. I got apple syrups because I think we're. So this is a enough. an amber Vermont. Yeah, it's a lighter one. I have a. I make molasses cookies, so there's a lot of maple syrup in there. Different kinds, because I was trying out different different uh, syrups for it. So. Okay, so we don't want to drown the the waffle. So then what you'll find with these is that the outside is going to be really crispy. So it's like hard. And then Here, let's let's uh, actually let's okay. show this off. Sorry, I wanted to, I want to show the waffle. So um so the outside of the waffle you can hear is like actually crispy. And then when we cut to the inside, you can see that there's still a lot of good like doughy waffliness. Um, but yeah, these are these are really fantastic. Bring my waffle back. There you go. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I wanted Taking to show. I wanted back. to show. That was a very risky move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really I have a lot of um. What's up, Adam? Thanks for shopping by. Food things, and I don't like people taking my food. I like sharing, but I don't like it when people take it. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so we made the buttermilk ones, and I think the biggest difference was that they didn't crisp up like this. Yeah. They were like soggy. I think these are getting close. Not quite. Um, so 
what I like about these ones and, and why I think this is such a good recipe is that because the yeast develops fluffiness, it actually puts air into the dough. What you get with these is all the things that I like about a um, like a waffle or a, a cookie still talking, so where it's crisp and you get that like, not like a snap, but like a little bit of, of crispiness when you bite into it, but the inside isn't crispy. Um, it, if you don't have that crispiness, it feels too much like a pancake to mm -hmm. me. Like it's just soft all the way through, which is good, but it, I don't know. It's it's like missing the essential waffleness yeah. of it. I think. Um, and having them sit in the fridge, uh, or yeah, having the that's not done. Right. Oh, those are beautiful. Those are they are, done? Those are perfect. Maybe the one on the back. Oh yeah, yeah, that's oh, done. Right. Um, having them sit in the fridge with the yeast overnight, um, it also gives them a little bit of a different flavor uh, because when you put yeast at lower temperatures it slows down its ability to eat the sugars and so it the, develops a slightly more sour uh, or acidic flavor so when you're doing sourdough bread um, if you want to get a little bit more like bite in your in your uh, bread you can let it rise overnight in the fridge and that that will help kind of kickstart that. So you get a little bit of that with this too, where you're using the instant yeast, but um, it's slowed down by the coldness of the fridge. So. Yeah, if you, if you want to read the science of this, it's actually really fascinating. They call it cold fermentation. Yeah. Um, and there's some really interesting stuff from like Kenny Lopez and, uh, and like the America's Test Kitchen talks about it a little bit. Um, Alton Brown probably has mm -hmm. some stuff. I haven't seen him specifically address it, but it seems like something he would have covered. Are there any left? There's barely like any one. Uh, no, I uh, I'm not going to make that work. Oh, you're just determined to put that whole thing in there. I got it. It's under control. In the meantime, I'm going to get the fork that I hid from you very carefully. Okay. And I'm going to eat this waffle. How? You don't need Eve. a fork. Eve. Um. I made the batter. Yeah, so check these out. So these are just beautifully crisp all the way around. You can see here at the edges where they weren't in direct contact with the waffle iron, that they're still really fluffy. They've got some give. Um, so these are just like really beautiful waffles. I'm gonna break one in half here. And you can see inside here, this is really springy. It's really, really soft and moist. Uh, if I push on it, you can see it kind of packs down again, but it doesn't, it's not raw. It is really, really fluffy, really, really beautiful. I love, I, like, yeah, I either. love this recipe. So our friend uh, actually told us about yeasted waffles. We were talking about uh, wanting to make waffles, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I make yeasted waffles for my family because you can save them." Um, and he's got, I think, two or three kids. So being able Who to are you about? Ezra. Oh, Ezra! Yeah, 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 yeah. So being able to save them was important so that he didn't have to make them every single morning fresh. So he makes it's, a big batch. This is basically a way to make your own Eggos, if you think basically. about it. Because like, if you've yeah. got a toaster, you could throw this in the toaster. Now, we don't have a toaster, so we can't do that. But what we can do is put these right in the broiler for like two minutes. And then yeah. we've got these really like warm, crispy waffles, um, you know, still delicious, basically, you know, Maybe not as good as they are right now, given that they're you know, seconds no, old when we're eating them, but they're still they're really still good, good, and they're going to beat the pants off of an ego for sure. Yeah. Um, You're just using your thing as a pit bull. <laughs> good. Um, another thing that we could do with these, like, we could make these savory. There's a, a place here in town that does some really good waffles where we could put, uh, like, an egg and some cheese over this. Uh, we could do, like... Don't be that person. I mean, I, I've had it, and it's good. Um, I, I really like waffles when they come with a savory element that I can dip in. Like if I've got uh, like a yolk, I like to put the, the waffle into the egg yolk to get some of that savoriness on it. See, it's really me, delicious. You're just trying to make it not a dessert. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it is a dessert. It's a baked good. Mm. I mean, you put a little bit of parsley on there, it's basically a vegetable. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. Is that how it works? That's how it works. That's why we have so much parsley, so that we can put it on exactly. everything. That's everything. a vegetable now. Yeah, that makes sense. Someone asked, no toaster. No 
toaster? What do you mean? We don't have a toaster. We don't have a toaster. You don't need one. Like an we oven. We make toast in the bo in the broiler. An oven, a broiler, and a and a stove top is like all of the devices that would be in your. And a kitchen. waffle iron, obviously. This is like I think the only single purpose thing that we have. Yeah, I'm really I'm really on the fence about getting a rice cooker though. I've heard so many good things. I've I've heard nothing but good things about rice cookers. That is that is fair. And we do eat a lot of rice. I, I think the thing about it is like if you are if you're gonna use it often enough to actually get the value out of it, awesome. But like in our case, you know, we we had a microwave in our last place. I think we used it twice the two I years that we lived it. there. I I I yeah. It was mainly to do leftovers and the leftovers didn't really taste that great. You wanna pull those waffles out? Oh good. Responsibility. There's pork right there. Oh. I thought maybe you took it with you. <laughs> really protecting it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. So I'm gonna do a, a veggie smoothie real quick too. Hot. Do you need help? No, it's just hot. I mean it's been made thingy. So that's to be expected. Do you need an adult? Well, I don't normally take them off of the thing. See, this is how it normally works, is I make the batter, Jason makes the waffle, cooks the waffle, and I get a plate of waffles. <laughs> it's really the pattern that I'm used to. There we go. All right. Um, pizza, okay. or pizza town? Waffle pizza town. Life. No, we still got... Oh, yeah, you want to do just... What? Here, you can do the last one. Do... Uh, do a scoop and a half of the dough. That should be basically the rest of it. Is one square, right? One square. So put it in the middle of the square. Yeah, keep it going. What do you think? More? And do I do like it? a half one next to it. Next to it? Yeah. Um, okay, so that's, I have. See, it's already going poorly. Oh well. That's okay. So we've got a bag of spinach. That's going to be the, the base of our um, our smoothie. And then I'm just going to grab whatever else I have on hand. So let's grab... Uh... We got frozen berries, too. Yeah, I was going to use those. Um, I've got some yogurt. So this is our way of getting vegetables in when we clearly are not doing anything good for us. Oh, shit. That what are you doing? Sorry, I thought, it was, I thought we were done. Um, okay, so then... So I've got the milk, I've got the uh, the spinach, I've got the yogurt, and then I'm just gonna grab a bunch of these mixed frozen berries. So these are uh, these are easy to find in the, the freezer section, and you can do quite a bit with them. So if you don't mind moving that to the side for Where us, the waffle tower. Waffle tower. And then. Use its own theme song. And then this is something that just kind of goes by feel, right? Um, so what I will do in the average smoothie I is like get it. all of So this is pre-washed. So I'm just going to get a huge handful of it, like a lot of it, like way more than you would think. And this is going to make two smoothies, right? Yeah. So like two big handfuls, basically Look at fill, that. The, fill the blender. You're so a daily serving, or daily, ha <laughs> One, <laughs> One serving, serving each of vegetables. vegetables. Uh, okay. So then. That's a good waffle iron. Yes, I this is the it's the it. all clad. I also didn't check when I put those in. Shit. Let's take a peek. And then I don't think it would be ready. It's, okay. it's still pretty blonde, yeah. Okay, so um, so then if you don't have frozen fruit, you can use any fruit you want. Uh, but the frozen fruit removes the need for ice cubes. So I'm gonna put a bunch of these in here. This is a mixed berry. So yeah, it's got so blueberries, uh, raspberries, and strawberries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm raspberries and blackberries. We're, we are growing our own blueberries and raspberries this year. It looks like we're going to have some pretty good pretty good stuff this year, which I'm very excited about. So. You, uh, are you going to start a, a plant channel in the party party discord? I think I will. Chris mentioned that I could do that. I'm like, okay. I think I might do that. I got a lot of plant content. Like <laughs> Tony, do you mind dropping a, a Discord uh, chat command real quick? We grab the peanut butter and the salt. Uh, which peanut butter do you want? 
the uh, the one that's open. This one? Nope, that's not peanut butter. You might have to, oh, you know what? I think we used that one. We need to open that, that one that we got. Big spoon? Yeah. That's what you're getting. Ooh, wildflower. And then, All right, so, so we got to try this one because. I actually don't like peanut butter, but we put it in the smoothie and it helps. It tastes, it does taste good. You can't really taste it that much. It tastes more like a peanut flavor. I, 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 I like the, I like peanuts. I just hate the butter, like the texture of peanut butter is really gross to me, so. Almost. Okay, so I'm gonna just stir, this is that like natural peanut butter, so we gotta go all the way to the bottom of the jar to get the oil back combined. It's not a great sound, but this is supposed to be really fancy peanut butter. We, <laughs> they didn't have normal peanut butter, and so we Isn't were like. is the same peanut butter we had last time? No. Um, and so we were like, well, what do you have? And they're like, well, we got the fancy stuff. And I'm like, okay. And we were like, I guess, okay, I guess we'll try it. Well, aren't you going to taste it before you plop it in there? I'm sure. There's little chunks of us in there. I don't like any of this that's happening right now. Is it good? God blew your mouth shut. Try it. You know, oh. It's going to be good in this one. Okay, so I'm gonna take like a big spoonful. I don't like it. <laughs> and just make sure like that it doesn't stick to the top there. I don't know. Why do you like that? Why do I like peanut butter? Yes. Because I'm a normal human person. No, a lot of people don't like peanut butter. It's not as well loved as That's the one, Tony, thank you. What's up, Nikki? We made waffles. Pull those up. It's gotta be done. Ooh, that one, mm, that might be a little burnt. That's, that's okay. not burnt, it's crisp. That's okay, that's the one that Marissa made. It's ruined. It's ruined. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it is perfect. <laughs> Just like me. <laughs> that, that little one I mean. But nothing like the pancakes. Next, plain yogurt. This is going to be so bad for me. Um. And so what we're going for with this is texture and protein. So the peanut butter and the protein do, uh, uh, the, the peanut butter and the yogurt do a good job of adding a little bit of funk, a little bit of, uh, of protein, a little bit of extra texture. Really good. <laughs> it's like a little building with a tiny little waffle on top. Waffles. Um, okay. Waffle tower. I need this to the salt. You should take a picture of that. That's fine. All right. Last thing. A little counterintuitive, but a pinch of salt. Jason adds salt to everything. You're very lucky. And you I'm didn't, always right. You're very lucky you didn't figure out a way to add butter to this. No. I put yogurt in it. That's basically butter. Fair. Okay. So uh, or is it sour next, cream? Um, okay, so I'm gonna unplug this and grab our blender. <laughs> we did build this city with waffles. Delicious. We lift that up for me for a second. Lift this up? Yeah. Is that gonna reach? Yeah. It should. Barely. Yeah, we're good. Why right. would they only whoever designed this kitchen is a bad person? Okay, so then I'm gonna get this in here and I'm basically I'm gonna start this low so that it pulls all the spinach in. And then once it gets going, I'm going to turn it high and let it sit. This is going to be loud, so we might not be able to talk over it. So I turn it on. Okay, so what's happening right now is the... Uh... Is nothing. No! Do not use that. Stop trying to use my stuff. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Um, the 
And so what, what's happening right now is we're just trying to get, I just want the uh, all the, the pieces to kind of get chunked up, right? Don't judge me, Robert. Full body tables. Okay. The pulsing doesn't work, though, is the problem. There's so much stuff in here. So this is going to be an adventure to solve. Food processor. We have a food processor. Hell yeah. Okay. Can't believe you broke it. You've used it so many times. Uh, well, I guess we need a Vitamix. Um, no. Look, doing kitchen quality smoothies, you need kitchen quality appliances. No, what happened was you got impatient. I didn't even get impatient. I did exactly the same thing that I've been doing. It's clearly not my fault. Don't break the food processor. We need it. Okay. So we'll switch over to the food processor if I can figure yeah, out good luck with that. this thing. There it goes. Okay. Is that gonna reach? <laughs> no. Oh, that's hot though. Ooh. Okay, I'm just gonna move this. Into here. We upgraded our food processor. Because I broke the other one. Yes, he did. You know why? It was weak. He gets impatient. I don't I do not get impatient. I did a normal amount of stuff in a food processor and it couldn't handle it. Okay, I need the rest of the pieces of it, I guess. Yeah, I notice a pattern too, Robert. Listen, little Bobby Tables. Eventually he'll see it. He'll become self-aware and see what he's doing. I don't know. I know. Stick this is lines up here. here. There we go. They need arrows on this I know. thing. And that. And then this bit. Seriously though, if you break this, I'm going to be so mad at you. That's going to be good, so let's get this in here. <clears throat> okay, I'm seeing what the problem was. Yeah, is there a common denominator in this problem? No, Should we talk it, about it? I was going to say milk to berry ratio was a problem. Milk to berry ratio. Got it all wrong. Um, okay. So. You don't want to wipe that up first. Yeah, looks very appetizing, doesn't it? It's gonna be delicious. You just Hey, don't horses. bring up the pancakes, okay? <laughs> the pancakes I'll have an excuse. Give me a minute. I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, then that has to line up, right? That has to line up and then this has to go on. Mm -hmm. This thing is like a it's like a serious puzzle. Okay, so now that I've got all of those pieces, I can just turn it on. Look at that. Beautiful. Is there a difference between a food processor and a blender? I mean, in the strictest sense, no, but like in the... Like, like what does a blender do that a food processor does? It, the blade shape is different and the bowl is different, so like... 
in this, everything kind of pulls toward the center blade, and then the blade is kind of up. I, I think Coming functionally. Down? No. no my too many berries in this one and so it's set up like saucer more than like a smoothie um but the the end result like it is going to be delicious it's going to be a little more berry flavored than i would usually do um but you know it's all right and i have an excuse to buy a good blender now so delicious for reference these are usually green no they're not fish yes, they are. you don't know what this color is Good though. This is like I would eat this for dessert. Do you not like it? Eating it. I don't, don't you like, like about it. it. Is it too much berry? Um, there's too much berry. I don't like the texture. God thing about textures. Don't like the texture. <laughs> yeah, they can't all be can all be winners. Um, okay. So I think with that. And it tastes way too, way too peanut buttery. Like no. More peanut buttery than normal. It does not taste peanut buttery. There's barely any peanut butter in this. Hmm. It's probably just the ratio is weird, so flavor is weird. The, the texture definitely is like, not there's good. a lot. Um, yeah. Look, it's so thick, the spoon Bobby, rests on top of it. Bobby Tables is all in on it. Um, yeah, because Bobby Tables is a man of taste. Unlike you, who have no taste. I have great taste. That's how I know that this could be better. <laughs> it could be better. Um, all right, y'all. I think that's it for us. We're going to go eat a couple of these waffles and then freeze the rest. And um, <laughs> we will... <laughs> um, so, yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Go call your moms. Wash your hands. Stay safe. Uh, we'll see you, you know, when we see you. <laughs>